setups on F1 2019. We all know they're there, and we all know they will help you gain so much time on your rivals. Yet, when it comes to sitting down and actually doing them, we hide in fear of getting it wrong because we have no clue what we are doing. But no more, because here at Veloce, we are going to give you five tips on setups in F1 2019. Step one, don't be afraid to copy. So many people make the same mistakes when it comes to creating setups. They all jump in the deep end trying to make their own setup from scratch, getting it all wrong and thinking they are useless. But there is no need to start from scratch. On time trial leaderboards for each track, you can actually apply the top guy's setups to your own car. This will not only save you loads of time, but will also give you a good base for each track. Now I need to express to you that this is just a baseline to start. You will need to change the setup to suit your own driving style. It's all about personal preference, but we will get into that later for now, let us do some laps in time trial. Get comfortable with the setup you are using whilst also improving your lap times until you get to a stage where the difference between each lap that you do is a few tenths of a second. Once you feel comfortable with the car and you've reached the limit in lap times, then that is when we can move on to the next step. Step two, avoiding time trial. Time trial is great. It's a really good place to start with, but this should not be your be all and end all. You should always be looking to doing all your practice and setup work in online sessions. Why is this, you may ask? Well, firstly, the car actually acts differently in online sessions compared to time trial. As online, you'll find the car to have a little bit more oversteer. In online sessions, you can also work out if the setup you have applied has good tire management. It's all well and good being the quickest guy or girl out there, but if you're going to be making seven pit stops a race, you're going to be dead last. The best way to do this is to practice in online sessions that are the same format as your league race. For example, if your league race is a short qualifying with a 25% race, then that is exactly what you would practice. You can do this by hosting a private lobby with friends, or if you have a spare PC or console with the game and a different account, you can always run around on your own. And if you just need help with your career mode, then jump on some quick races and set them up the same as you would have in career mode. Step three, fixing oversteer. We talked earlier about how in online sessions, you'll get a little bit more oversteer than in time trial, which is bad because oversteer will mean more tire wear, less consistency, whilst making the car more undrivable. Now, we can't really mention all of that and not tell you how to fix it, can we? So how do you fix oversteer? Well, let's go through it by each parameter. Starting off with aerodynamics. You can either increase the rear wing or decrease the front wing. And then looking at suspension, you can either increase the front suspension and the front roll bar or decrease the rear suspension and rear roll bar. And then finally, looking at the throttle diff, you want to decrease the on-throttle diff or increase the off-throttle diff. It's very important to note to only do one or the other for each parameter and to make sure you are only tweaking the car one bit at a time. Setups may take a while to create, but you need to work out what works and what doesn't. To just change everything in one go and hope for the best isn't going to get you anywhere. Step four, go extreme. So you want to find out what every parameter on the F1 game does and how it affects your car out on track. Well, there is one very simple way to do this, especially if you haven't got the time to study and graduate as an in-game engineer. Set the car up to the most basic setup there is and then do a few laps to get the knowledge of how the car feels. From there, adjust one of the settings on the car. Let's start with the front wing. Set it to the extreme one way and do a few laps, but this time, now getting a feel for how it feels different to before. Then set it to the extreme the other way, and you should be able to work out how the car feels completely different from the last set of laps that you did. Do this for each individual adjustment, and you should be able to have a good idea as to what everything does in the game. This will help you further when making your own setups because you have a rough idea of what you need to change to be quicker and more consistent. Remember, don't just look at being quick. You also need to make sure you are comfortable and consistent. Step five, setups during the race. Right, so you've got a setup that you are happy with. It's balanced, quick in both qualifying and the race, whilst not wearing out the tires too quickly. So now I think it's time that we talked about changing your setup mid-race. Park Ferme rules mean 
that you cannot change the car after you leave the garage in qualifying apart from brake bias and throttle differential. So what do these two additions do? To put it bluntly, not a lot. It can gain you time if used well, but we are looking at hundreds or even thousands of a second gains, but it will help you feel more comfortable between each individual corner. So using this feature is entirely up to you, but if you're going to choose between taking a corner or changing this, it's probably best that you focus on the corner. So how do we best use this? Starting with brake bias, the higher the percentage, the more the brakes are to the front of the car. You want to be leaning on the front of the car a lot more and aim to put this as high as you can without locking up. If it is a slightly weaker braking zone, however, like China Turn 1, for example, turn the percentage down a little as you aren't relying too much on the brakes to slow the car down. If lockups still occur though, then you may need to change the actual brake pressure or even recalibrate your brakes. <coughs> Benjamin Daly. <coughs> brake bias can actually help you with tire wear too. If you're running thin on tires, move the brake bias forward and that will stop the car from sliding around. Next up is throttle differential. This is a rather simple one in comparison. In qualifying, run a higher throttle diff to give yourself more torque out of the corners. Whereas in the race, use a higher diff for only the main traction zone. However, if you are using up your tires too quickly, reduce the diff as this will take away the strain that is put on the rear tires. So those have been our top five tips on learning the basics of setups on F1 2019. If you found today's lesson helpful and need more help on the F1 game, feel free to check out our other Esports 101 videos. And if you feel that there is something that we have missed, let us know in the comments section. I've been Hayden from Veloce and we will see you in the next video.